Until recently, no fighter has been more successful than the unbeaten Julio Cesar Chavez, who had won 87 fights and five world titles in three weight divisions. But on September 10th, for the first time ever in his 13-year professional career, Chavez did not hear his name announced the winner. Moving up to his fourth weight class, he challenged fellow five-time champion, Pernell Whitaker. At the final bell, most believed Whitaker had won convincingly and were shocked at the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, the decision is a majority decision draw. Okay, no, you say. I felt that although I didn't win outright, I had pressured Whitaker to such an extreme that the decision should have been in my favor. Not many agreed with Chavez or the judges. And although he would go on to win two more bouts, they wonder if he is no longer invincible. The reason I think I can beat Chavez is uh, I'm hungry. I want a championship fight. I want to be able to hold a championship, defend the thing, and make some money, and make my career successful. Frankie Randall is certainly a hungry fighter. While Chavez was enjoying the success of his championship, fighting in sold-out stadiums to millions of adoring fans, Frankie Randall, from the small town of Morristown, Tennessee, was learning his craft in obscurity, slowly but surely earning a reputation in boxing circles. For the people who hadn't seen me, I'm a boxer puncher. I have uh, good speed, good power in both hands. All around, well-equipped, professional fighter. Over the last 10 years, Randall has compiled 48 victories in 51 fights, 39 of them by knockout. But despite this, or because of it, no champion has given him a title fight. It's taken me a long period of time, more than any other fighters, but uh, I've struggled with that. Thought about giving up the game several times, but it's in my blood. I've been doing it since I was nine years old. I enjoy it. I'm, I think I'm good at it, and uh, I love boxing. Frankie Randall is the kind of fighter that really works into my style because he'll come after me. After all those wins, it was very shocking to hear a draw. But I recognize that Randall's style is very different from Whitaker's. This time, I'll be much hungrier. I have the skills to be any of the champions out there. Chavez happened to be the one I'm fighting that night. And uh, so, it's just... It's going to be my chance to prove that I am one of the world's greatest fighters also. The first Chavez-Randall fight created shocking results and surprising headlines. The date was January 29th. The champion, the undefeated Julio Cesar Chavez. Although a recent tie against Pernell Whitaker had taken away a little of his luster, Chavez's five world titles and 89 victories had for years earned him the accolade of the world's greatest fighter, pound for pound. The challenger, the often overlooked and always underrated Frankie Randall. Winner of close to 50 fights, Randall had earned the nickname The Surgeon for his ability to dissect his opponents. But throughout his 11-year career, this 15-to-1 long shot had never been granted a title fight until now. I hadn't had a chance to, to fight for a title fight, and I wanted to come out and perform my best. If I would have performed my best and lost, I still would have been satisfied with myself. Randall did come out performing his best. Using his speed and effective jab and accurate combinations, he piled up points during the first three rounds. <laughs> I really thought Randall would get tired. The way I was fighting those first three rounds, I figured he'd run out of gas. I really thought that if I kept up the pressure, I'd be able to knock him out in the later rounds, and the outcome of the fight would have been different. Starting in the fourth round, Chavez began to pick up the pace, forcing the action with right hand leads to the head, trademark left hooks to the body, and relentless pressure. He tries to do that in every round. He tries to go farther and harder and stronger. So, and I had to bring myself up to be where he was in order to make the fight a better fight for each other. Entering the seventh round, Chavez was narrowly ahead when referee Richard Steele made the first of two controversial decisions. Look at that punching machine. Low blow by Chavez. 
You certainly don't feel like I threw any low blows. They were all to the midsection of the body. I got pictures and proofs to see that you can see that he hit me low. The momentum of the fight continued to shift. Round to round, minute to minute, as each man gave as good as he got. Entering the 11th, Chavez was slightly ahead on two of the three scorecards. But the next three minutes would prove to be the most disastrous in his long and illustrious career. He hit him low, but I'll tell you what, there's a world championship being taken away. Julio Cesar Chavez, very, very upset at Richard Steele. That one right there, it hurt. You know, so I pulled off and I tried to get my win back and get everything going back again and come back again. Then he took a point away. That's his job. And just a minute later, Randall, with the simplest of combinations, a one-two punch, made boxing history. And I pulled off the ropes, came around, and he was at distance. And I just threw a jab and come right back with the right hand because he was, he was, like, squared off. You know, and he was right there. Randall threw a lot of other punches that were much harder, but they didn't knock me down. I'm just disgusted with myself. Chavez, desperate to even the score, was unable to catch the elusive Randall in the final round. But even with the deductions for the low blows and knockdown, the fight was too close to call. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner and new champion. I did cry, yeah, I cried, and I shed some tears because it was a moment, you know, and uh, it's, it brings a little tear to the eye now, so, you know, it's it's very emotional. It's still something that, wow, you know, it's a relief of stress and everything off of you, so why not let a little tear out? Oh, down goes Chavez for the first time in his career! Unbelievable! Flush on the face! And now it's goodbye title, Bobby. He is in trouble. Look at his legs. This is unbelievable. 18 seconds to go in the 11th. Can he make it through this round? He's backing up against Randall, the first man to put Julio Cesar Chavez on the canvas. Five seconds. What a round. Here you see him again. He's coming back. What? Randall's backing up, and Chavez just comes and gets sloppy, opens his gloves and he jumps and fires one right down the pipe. One more look at the great Julio Cesar Chavez going down. Thanks. Flush on the face. Here we go, let's get the decision from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing here at the MGM Grand Garden, we have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Chuck Jumpa scores the bout 116-111, Frankie Randall. Judge at ringside, Abraham Chavarria scores the bout 114-113, to 113, Julio Cesar Chavez. Judge at ringside, Angel Luis Guzman scores the bout 114 to 113 in favor of the winner and new champion, Frankie, the Surgeon of Rome.